Ladies and gentlemen, jumping to the next event, which is the report of the chairman of the second BIS for Associate Professor Dr. Muji Setio. The time is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed our activities like teaching, researching, and other socializing. We are confused because we haven't experienced before. My close friend, Associate Professor Dr. Engineering Thomas Kivevele from Nelson Mandela African Institute of Science and Technology, Tanzania. Hi, good morning everyone. I think it's morning that side and uh, I don't know what time difference will be with the Tanzania, but I'm assuming you guys are having good time that side. And uh, my name is Thomas Kivevele. I'm from the Nelson Mandela African Institution of Science and Technology in Arusha, Tanzania. Uh, I would like first to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Professor Muji Setio for giving me this opportunity to present what we are doing here in Arusha, Tanzania. And uh, also I would like to thank the organizing committee for organizing this event or this conference. Also, I would like to thank the all team uh, the plants, uh, local plants for the biofuel production and the influence of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So these are the things that I'll cover just slightly, not that much, uh, not that in detail. I will talk on the layman point of view. I will not go into technical details, so possibly so that every, um, anybody in here can get a picture on what we are doing uh, for possible future collaborations. So, so far we have, uh, I'm leading one research group. So we have different research groups at our universities. Like for my research group that I'm leading is called the Clean Energy Technologies Set. So this is the research group that I am leading. I have different students. We have a member of faculty staff who are also engaged in this, in this research group. So we normally in this group, we want to do development of alternative and sustainable energy technologies for domestic and the industry use. So we do things on the biofuels production, characterization from different feed stocks. We do produce bioenergy, bioethanol, biodiesel, the ABE, which is the acetone, butanol, ethanol, etc. So this is the today's talk that I'll be talking about. Also, we do the biogas production. I will brief talk about this uh, biogas things. Also, we do solar energy applications like the solar dryers, the solar cookers, etc. We work on the renewables and the energy smart grids. We work on the energy storage systems. We do energy management and auditing, especially in buildings for the energy efficiency, also in the industries uh, with the theme of reducing energy consumption in the industries, also uh, in buildings like the commercial, uh, commercial buildings. We do gasification and pyrolysis for production of syngas uh, that can be used for uh, local, local local use like in the in the, in the houses for cooking or whatever. So also we do the optimization of locally made small wind turbines, especially the blades. Also we do development of small hydropower uh, plants for rural electrification because we have many people who are doing agriculture like they want for irrigation and the different applications. So we do test some of the small hydropower plants, especially the gravitational water vortex power plants. This is because we we don't need to use the high head. So there's no need of a head when you do use this kind of a technology. So it's a simple technology kind of. Also, we don't need a head. As a, also, we do some technologies on hydrokinetics using the normal flowing uh, uh, levers. So we work a lot of things on, on clean energy technologies. So these are the areas as the people who are in here can see how we can uh, try to collaborate or work together. So we do a lot of things on on this uh, on these areas. So going straight to my talk today, I will talk about the biofuels, especially biodiesel. 
So in here, biodiesel, we do produce and characterize, and characterize biodiesel, especially from non-edible uh, African uh, biofuels, bio, uh, oils. We do this because we are trying to reduce the uh, fuel versus food uh, competition. We know that uh, in many cases, uh, in many cases of the production of biodiesel, many people use this edible, like the sunflower, corn oils. So we think that using those things can 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 put a, a big competition between food and the and the and and and, and the fuel. So we're trying to use the non-edible that cannot be eaten by anything. Also, they are wild grown. So we're trying to use this so that we can uh, we can reduce the competition between the food. Also, to add value to this kind of of, of neglected, neglected kind of plants, so that people can try can start growing, make money. Yeah, and then and then increase their, their their income. That's the idea behind. So in the biodiesel that we produce, there are issues with uh, oxidation stability. Biodiesel is not stable when stored for a long time uh, of period uh, and, 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 and under severe conditions, especially when exposed to uh, to air or exposed to high temperature during transportation. So it oxidizes and forms some uh, sediments or gums and. Uh, Cannot can no longer be used in in engine. So we try also to investigate this stability of the biodiesel that we produce from non-edible uh, non-edible uh, oils. So to see how stable they are and how we can stabilize it to be stored for a longer time uh, use. Also we do the engine performance exhaust emissions and the combustion characteristics uh, using TDI engine, not necessarily TDI engine, it can be any compression ignition engine, uh, diesel or diesel engine. So we do some testing on this to see how these fuels they can perform in 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 in, 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 in engines. So basically, we I don't know if all of you knows on how we do the production of biodiesel. We have one big process and a well-known process we call the transesterification process where we use the alcohols and the catalysts. Catalysts can come from anywhere. You can use commercial catalysts, but for us, we are trying to uh, to, to, to produce uh, catalysts from, from wastes, especially agricultural wastes. We are trying to add value to agricultural wastes, especially the, those with um, high amount of uh, uh, metal oxides, uh, especially like calcium oxides. Uh, we do the calcination to get that calcium oxide or potassium or or potassium, whatever elements that are in there, which are good metallic elements. Uh, so we produce the catalyst from the waste. Also, we compare the performance with the normal uh, catalyst from from, from commercial. Uh, so the transfiguration, you use the al alcohols and the catalysts, and then you have the oily and the oil fats. Uh, that is the feedstock. So the oils for us we use from the non-feedstock, uh, from the non-edible oils. So all together, when they are mixed, you can do what we call the transfiguration process. Transfiguration process, you can heat at a certain temperature that is optimal temperature, maybe 60 to uh, 50, 60, uh, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. Then for almost one an hour or more, depends on the quality of the oil, then you can do the washing, you can do the drying, then you can separate the biodiesel and then you can get your biodiesel. So this is the common process that we normally use for production uh, biodiesel, the, what we call the transfiguration uh, process. So this is the easiest one for us we normally use. There are many technologies that are being used, uh, but to, for us we prefer this one because it's easy and uh, and it is much it's much convenient for 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 us. So we we discussed about the issue of oxidation that biodiesel when exposed to uh, to air or high temperature it oxidizes. So there's the issues that when it, biodiesel is exposed to air or high temperature, a hydrogen in the alkyl group can be removed. Uh, if it is removed, it can form a free uh, radicals. Mm -hmm. So when it, um, when it reacts with oxygen, it can form hydroperoxides. And when at a certain stage hydroperoxides, the process continue until when the hydroperoxide reacts with another hydroperoxide, then it forms stable compounds. If it forms stable compounds, this like the sediments or the gums, then the different characteristics or properties of biodiesel change. 
like the kinetic viscosity increases, the other parameters also will be affected. So the biodiesel can no longer be used in the engines. So we can we try to investigate this uh, this this problem uh, by using different uh, technologies. Like there are many antioxidants that are available in the in the market to to increase this oxidation stability or to prevent biodiesel from being oxidized. For us now, we try also to investigate the natural antioxidants from different plants. We're extracting uh, phenols from different plants. Also, we test for, for, for increasing the oxidation stability of biodiesel. So we try to, to use the local available material rather than buying products from outside. But we still have issues that the natural antioxidants that we produce uh, from the from the from, from, from the uh, plants or waste, they, they don't they perform good like the 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 the, 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 uh, the, the commercial one. So we are trying to explore more for, uh, plants or waste with a good phenolic content that can work better close to that um, commercial ones. But we also do the blendings to reduce the amount of uh, commercial antioxidants. So we work a lot on 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 that areas, especially tackling the issue of oxidation of of, bio, of biodiesel, because one of the outstanding issues on why biodiesel is being difficult to 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 commercialize. Uh, so in one of the uh, bio uh, 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 biofuel production or biodiesel, we had uh, one project uh, on biofuel that we worked on. I think it ended last year. We had a two. It was a two-year project, 2018 and 2019, funded by the World uh, the World Academy of Sciences. So uh, the project was to evaluate the suitability of water hazard. I think we all know what is water hazard. This grow rapidly in the in 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 in, in, the, in the water bodies. So for us, we were interested on the water hazard from the Lake Victoria, which is in the northern part of Tanzania, bordering the countries of Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. It's really affected now by water hazard. So they are, they have, they are using a different means of removing these water hazards, like the biological, chemical. Uh, manual moving, um, manual by moving it manually, just harvesting. So for us, we are trying whatever they are using it, it, they are throwing it or trying to burn it. Then we are trying to see what can we get from this. Uh, it's like now a waste also is 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 a, is a waste kind of, uh, of, of of water hides it, and uh, there is a possibility that you can get something from this island, just flowing or burning and, 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 and something like that. So we were trying to, to check if they are suitable for production of, of biofuels, especially biodiesel or bioethanol or biogel. So for us, but we, we mostly worked on the production uh, of, of biodiesel. So you can see the problem. These are the water hazards in here. So you can see people, they are being affected, really like the fisher, fisherman, fish, fishing uh, uh, activities are being affected. People cannot move with their canoes or boats in here also. So it's becoming difficult. So uh, these need to be removed in here or, or, or eradicated by enemies. So we are trying to check if we can get something uh, for, for, for biofuel uh, production or biofuel production uh, uh, application of these water hazards. So we try to produce biodiesel from 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 the from the from, from, from the water hazards. Even although we had a challenge that the content of, of oil from this uh, plant was very very low and it cannot be uh, uh, feasible for production of biodiesel. So I think at the end of the day, we propose the possibly the production of bioethanol or bioethanol gel would be much better. It's, uh, also, the biogas will be much better rather than producing biodiesel from 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 this. Biogas is being produced from it, and uh, it has shown a good result. Uh, so, so I think that this will be a good recommendation on the use of water hazard from the from the from, from the lakes, especially from the uh, Lake Victoria. 
So in production of biodiesel, we did a normal thing. So we produced the biodiesel uh, through a transportation process. Also the biodiesel that we, uh, we produced, we also checked for, 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 for oxidation stability, because as I said before, we do study on, on the oxidation stabilities. So we checked the oxidation stabilities by using uh, uh, antioxidants. We call natural antioxidants from clove waste and uh, also bubble tree uh, bands. So we extracted some phenolic content from these two th uh, from these two wastes uh, to see if how they can increase the oxidation stability. So it was extracted from these plants. Also we produced the biodiesel from the from the water hazard. Uh, and then the biodiesel called the, we can just say uh, water high it methyl ester. So we did, we did the characterization of the biodiesel. Also, we did the doping now of the biodiesel with the antioxidants from clove and the bubble uh, extracts. Also, we did the uh, blending of the uh, uh, good commercial antioxidant we call the propagal. Uh, so sometimes it's just called PY antioxidant. So we did the oxidation stability investigation using a pure natural antioxidant from clove and the bubble uh, tree, tree buds, also the blending to the PY antioxidants. So we did uh, all the characterization, also we did the, the, the recommendation on how this antioxidant performed also on how good the biodiesel for motor acid was. I think for more information, people can see we, do, we did the publication on this uh, paper on the 2019. So we can get uh, good details from the, from, from the site. Uh, on the production, this is the production of biodiesel for motor hazard. We can see the fatty used in cold uh, areas. Uh, yeah, so using the oxidation stability increasing the oxidation stability we extracted we say the phenolic content from the bubble tree also from the cloves also we have the py so extracting the oxidation uh, extracting the phenols we saw that our clove had a phenolic content of 2220 almost similar to other previous studies not that much difference also the bubble tree bark had a phenolic content of 48, even higher from the previous study. So we, so we selected uh, plants with good phenolic uh, content. Also, we had we had a one OH group. This is the advantages of uh, the more OH group you have in this, this structure, uh, the, 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 the more the, 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 the antioxidant can, can be effective on increasing or uh, preventing biodiesel from oxidizing. And from the bubble tree, we had many, many OH groups. So we expect this to work uh, very good in, in increasing the oxidation stability. Similar to this, uh, uh, propyl, progalol, PY antioxidant. This is a commercial, commercial antioxidant. This is a commercial antioxidant. So yeah, so there are similarities. So we expect this especially bubble and the whole clove to work a bit better. In the increasing the oxidation stability. More information can be found uh, in this published uh, paper. So we can see now in uh, doping different concentrations of antioxidants, the clove, uh, pure, the clove and the PY blends 50-50 and the pure and the pure and the, and the pure PY. This is the commercial, commercial antioxidants. We can see the commercial antioxidant had a higher oxidation stability. The increase of oxidation stability were higher in all concentrations, but also the PY, the, the, the clove with PY followed because of the blend. Uh, also the uh, pure cl clove had a, a bit lower than the blends and the pure proper galate. But at the end of the day, we want to see at the three to meet the standard of of the US, the ASTM. So we can see at a concentration of 400 of pure PY, the biodiesel met the oxidation stability specified in the, the American standards of three, of three, of three, of three hours. Also for the European standard, the eight hours, it means the pure, 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 pure clove didn't meet the, 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 the standard. So this is the issue. So we met the European standard, the, the American standards, 
but we failed the European standards. So there are more research need to be done on this increasing, uh, on this pure, on this natural antioxidants, uh, especially on, on improving the oxidation stability. So they are still, we are still working on this, on how we can improve this or look for other plants or ways with more antioxidant uh, content or phenolic content. Similarly to the acacia pure or, uh, or, or the babul, babul, babul tree uh, bugs, or sometimes called acacia pure. Then we have acacia py blend. Also we have the py blend. So the py also still uh, did better in every point. So for the pure acacia meeting American standards, so we see almost it needed almost similar to 400 or so. 400 was enough to meet the three hours, the similar to the clove. So this is good. Also for the eight hours, yeah, we didn't meet exactly, but at least for the, uh, for around uh, 800, it was close to eight. So I think the bubble performed better on pure form than the, than, 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 than the clove. But funny enough, at the highest, at the higher concentration, it was reduced. So further research need to be done in here on what happened when the higher concentration, uh, this, this, this bubble, uh, uh, antioxidants reduce the, uh, the, 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 the induction period or the oxidation stability. One of the students so far is working to find out the answers what happened on, 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 on this. So this is, you can say, the use of antioxidants, uh, pure antioxidants, natural antioxidants, and uh, on increasing the oxidation uh, stability. So this is the area that we are working on. Also, we have, uh, we do some production of biodiesel from the tamarindus, indica, fruit, shell, ash, uh, special biodiesel from palinare, Tutafela seeds oil. This is a locally found uh, plant. It can be found in many areas in, in Africa. Uh, this is a wildly grown kind of a plant, not used for food. It's been eaten by animals in the forest. So we produce, produce biodiesel on this, but we used the catalyst from the Taramendas indica. We didn't like to use the commercial. So uh, if we did the the XRD patterns of the of the Talamendus uh, Talam, uh, indica fruit shell, so it had a higher carb calcium uh, calcium oxides. So this indicates that the use of this uh, Talamendus indica can be used for uh, as a catalyst for during the transcription process. So getting this, you just do a calcination process. You calcinate, you heat up this to about almost maybe 800 degrees Celsius. Like for us, I think we used the, uh, eight, we, we calcinated eight, 800 degrees Celsius. And then you just grind, you get your powder that you can use for production of biodiesel. So using the uh, product producing biodiesel from these plants, the Parenare uh, bio Parenare Kutaf, uh, uh, Kulatilifolia biodiesel, we had a good production of biodiesel. The yield was high. Also, the most of the properties of biodiesel met the uh, the standards. Also, we had uh, not that good flow properties. Cause nine it was not a good. Uh, cold flow properties because very high. So this is this kind of biodiesel is a challenge to be used in the in the cold uh, cold areas. But the other parameters I think were within the specified uh, standards. So we can say this is a good uh, kind of feedstock, uh, palinare we can use for production of biodiesel generally. Even though there are still challenges to work on. Also, the use of tamarindus, the indica fruit shell ash as a catalyst in transcription process rather than using the commercial ones like the potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide that we normally use in the transcription process. So we use this as a heterogeneous catalyst, avoiding the homogeneous. Heterogeneous catalyst can be reused for several times. So it's more economical than using the homogeneous like the uh, uh, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So this kind of uh, catalyst cascinated from the from this waste can be used uh, for some time, so with a very good uh, efficiency. Also, we did some production of biodiesel. Some of the plant we call croton megalopus oil. This is one also 
well known in Africa. Uh, plant is a non-edible found in the world, uh, not eaten by anything. So we can use for production of biodiesel. So using the normal potassium hydroxide catalysts, we produce biodiesel from these oils. Uh, more further details can be found in these publications or many other publications. So going to the uh, fatty acid profile, we can see uh, biodiesel had a, a good properties. I think most of the properties are not that bad. Also going to the produced biodiesels, comparing to the standards, we can see most of the uh, properties were within uh, uh, standards for the pure uh, croton oil is the croton oil, croton oil methyl ester, and uh, blends with the 80% of uh, diesel. Also, we are within standards as comparing these are uh, the, uh, the standards. Also, you can see we had also good flow properties, possibly because of the, uh, of the higher, uh, high, high, high unsaturated fatty acids. So, they had, this was uh, had a good cold flow properties on the production uh, that can be used also in the uh, in the cold areas so this is a good 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 property of the biodiesel of biodiesel from cotton oil uh, compared to the to the previous than that we, we 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 saw so most of the properties are being compared and they are within the standards so the production of this biodiesel i think was very good uh, uh, no, no, no uh, I mean the, the the properties of this biodiesel was good as compared to standards and the other and the other parameters. Also, we did production of biodiesel from croton oil. Uh, sorry, the moringa oil. Also, this this is well known worldwide. Even in Brazil, they have done a lot of things on this one. It's a good medicinal kind of oil. It has many applications and many studies have been done on the production of biodiesels. Uh, we did also the one from Tanzania. We produced, uh, we published. So for more details, somebody can go and see from this paper. Uh, comparing the study, uh, the, 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 the composition of the uh, Moringa oil methyl ester, we can see it was rich in an, a monounsaturated fatty acids with around 74. Also, the polyunsaturated fatty acid of around three. So this one, we can say it was no, uh, more of unsaturated fatty, uh, fatty acids. So going to the parameters, we can see the physical and the chemical properties. We can see most of the properties of 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 of, of, of moringa oil methyl esters were within standards. If you compare to the standards of the American standards, and this is the European standards. So we can see. Uh, uh, the cold flow properties were not that high, so this one is not a very good kind of biodiesel to be used in cold flow properties because the cold flow properties are higher. The temperature of 10 and the 4 is higher. This is possible due to the presence of this 22% uh, percentage of saturated fatty acids, making this more 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 stable kind of uh, of of of, uh, of a biodiesel. So yeah, so we can say the oxidation stability, you can see it was around four point something, meeting the standard of European, uh, American standards, but failed the European standards. <clears throat> um, note that during these publications, I think the European standard was six hours minimum, but now the current standard, the standard uh, uh, for the European is eight minutes, is eight, uh, sorry, it's not eight minutes, is eight hours minimum. This one is minimum, sorry. This one is minimum. So it's three hours minimum for the Euro uh, American standard, the STM. <clears throat> and for the European standard now is eight hours minimum. So they have changed the standard. So you can see it was a very, is a kind of a very stable kind of biodiesel. So this is possible due to the presence of high percentage of saturated fatty acids, which was around 24 point, point point something, point, point eight, even although it fails, uh, it does not have, is not having good uh, cold flow properties. So this is the problem. When you, the biodiesel is stable, uh, good in oxidation stability, there's a possibility of having bad, uh, not that bad, not that good cold flow uh, properties. That's, uh, those are the challenges that many researchers are working on, we are still working on on how we can balance all of these things. Biodiesel is a very challenging kind of biofuel. 
So that's why now uh, we are also moving now to further upgrading biofuels, maybe by doing ketonization, going to a, a more pure kind of biofuels like the, the jet fuels or going to jet additives. That's where we are going now. Uh, that's where we are looking to work on rather than ending up with only this biodiesel with a lot of challenges. Also, we did some study on the Marketi. Marketi oil, this is also a plant found in Southern Africa. Uh, is a non -ed is edible, but widely grown, not eaten that much. You can see further study on um, details on this on this study. So the market oil also we it's obtained in Africa, especially Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, ta Tanzania, not that much, Zambia, and South Africa. So going to the fatty acid composition, we can see the uh, it was not that stable. It was rich on mono unsaturated fatty acid with uh, 16, but polyunsaturated six was 65. So just having polyunsaturated fatty acid means this biodiesel is not that stable. So we expect the oxidation stability to be low and having also good four properties. So going to the parameters now, the fuel properties of the biodiesel, we saw the, the code flow properties are in here. You can see they had a good flow property. So this biodiesel can be used in cold areas. Uh, yeah, it's going to be used in cold areas. Also, the other parameters, most of them were within uh, standards of the European standards. But also, if you go straight to the oxidation stability now, uh, yeah, it it passed the uh, American standards of three hours because it was 4.75, but it failed the European standards of Challenges. six hours.